So last month I did a video talking about creating email clients and servers and using those sorts of systems to produce notifications so that we can use that to sort of determine whether or not events have occurred within the Minecraft world. And I've done a few other things and talked about that as well. And I wanted to expand on those ideas a bit more. Um, I, I've sort of discovered, hearing about here and there, that some of the code that I've written has been adapted for Skynet, which I'm, I'm sort of partially familiar with. It's, it's, and humbled though I am about the event, I sort of had some other ideas for how I wanted uh, the programming system that I've been used to be applied. So I was sort of hoping to show off the ideas that I had today. Essentially, the main problem with that previous system was that it had a, le a very limited range to work on. It's big enough for this sort of island that I'm on over here, but for longer distances, it's it's not sufficient. For example, you have to reach that, that island over there. So I've developed essentially a, a way of dealing with that, that sort of situation. But of course, by fixing that problem, I've created a whole range of possibilities, as very often is the case in, in this sort of system. And now there's a whole lot of different things that I can do with uh, the, the technologies I've developed. So I want to sort of show off what I've done. I'm going to try and clean it up before I release the code, but for the second at least we can sort of demonstrate the, the possibilities and capabilities. And once I have some more concrete things to show you, then I'll, I'll go through that. So today it will mostly be the range of the internet and one other thing that I've developed which is called um, Magic, but I'll talk about that a little bit later. So first off, before, as I mentioned, I had a client-server based system and the email will go directly to the client and it will go back up to the servers again. So the emails will go from client to server back to client again through requests and things. And that works quite nicely, but of course if you're out of range you can't work correctly. So instead you have to have routers. Now again, this island is actually too small for routers to work, so I thought you had to build this land bridge here. And you can see the two computers there with the modems on the top there. Those are also, they're going to be routing computers. So the way this, this, this structure is going to work, it constructs essentially this, this large network that, that covers essentially very, very large distances, as much distance as you can to place. And we can activate it through um, through just by attaching a computer to a network and providing there's a router nearby to respond. You can just put your computer down and say, I want to get onto this network, and they'll say, great, you're on the network, welcome, welcome aboard, and that sort of stuff, and everything will work nicely. But the first thing, of course, we have to do is we have to turn everything on. So we'll start, I'll just show you, start by showing you how it works. Um, imagine that the network is like a giant tree, a tree-based structure, if you're a bit more familiar with computer science, and the idea is that at the top of the tree, there's the node, there's your root node, and that's this wonderful thing here the master server. Beautiful. And then that node has sort of branches that each sort of go off into different directions. And that in turn has its own branches and so on and so forth. So it sort of builds a tree-like structure. And at the end of those tree-like structures you have nodes that have got node children, as we call them, children nodes. And these are what we call our clients. And they're like the computer where you do your email and stuff like that. So the nodes in between those are routers and they handle all requests going back to the master server and forward again. So the master server handles all requests going in and it sort of puts them all going out. Of course, the master server doesn't just do everything because it's too much work for one computer, so instead it passes them off to two subservers. So we have the mail server here and the magic server here, and I've got a few others here for IM, file server when I can figure out file transfers nicely, uh, a train server, and there might be a, an interface terminal there as well. well. We'll sort of see as we go. So when we just turn these on, what you have to do essentially is you just have to enter the ID for your server, and that will now admit itself onto the master server. As you can sort of see here, that's gone through nicely, and it's just, and we're online now. So it's now added the master server there, the mail server there, as you, as you can see. We'll do the same thing for Magic here. So we'll just go 137. And Magic is now on, and that's on the network and working nicely as well. So now we have two servers connected to, to this computer here, and they can they can pass requests back and forth as they need to. The reason I've done this way is mostly for architectural reasons. It makes programming the servers much easier than if you had to handle everything uh, one by one. So. Now that we've got that going, let's see if we can attach myself to a computer. So this is a client system, as you can see, this is one that will be in, in a house or something, and just people would use this manually. So the first thing we have to do, go onto our disk here. My disk has got all the network stuff on it. We're just going to see network. And the program I'm looking for is register. And the register program will essentially send out a loud, loud telecom saying hello. And if there's any computer nearby that's listening or responding to um, computers to, to get onto this network, it will say hello. And then the computer will know, right, Excellent, that means there's definitely someone here who can connect me onto this network. In that case, I'm then just going to send another email saying, can you please add me to the network? Can you please put me on your network tree? And then it'll get response back if that's successful, or if it won't, then it will be unsuccessful. You can, you could limit, you could have limiting functions if you wanted to as well for this, but usually not necessary. So we'll just use our register now. My modem is on the left side. It's attempts to connect. It's found a network, which is great. It's online, and now it's just updating my preferences. And it looks as though it's all been done. So if we go to our root directory, 
you'll see there's a pref file that's been constructed and then we just edit pref and that's just added the router ID which is the one that we connect to so you can see we connect to 137 that's the master server so this one computer just connects directly to the master server and inside we to left so I've been using vim a lot recently so forgive me for making mistakes right so now we've done that let's um let's try some routing uh, some router works so we'll just turn on these routers here they already have the software loaded up on them but it's also on the disk there as well so it's just a matter of going router and these computers will do exactly the same thing that the clients do they'll they'll say hello and then they'll listen for any hellos and then when they do they'll 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 connect themselves to that network because they need to so it's done the same thing here again it's found one from 137 so it's connected to the master server as well now this computer is too far away to connect to the master server this one back here so it will have to connect to this computer rather than the master server so let's just do that now this has led to some boring debugging sessions i can tell you because if they're too close it'll just all connect to the master server which is no good so just go around there as well. Now this one's connected to 132. So that means it's connected to a different computer. And we'll do it. Actually no, we'll, we'll do that computer a little bit later on down the track. Let's head back to the master server now. And you should be able to see what's forming is this is this idea of a network tree where computers slowly sort of connect to each other to form this function. They all point back to the master server. It's interesting, um, none of the routers actually have any information about the network at all. All they know is about where their parent is, which is the, the node one just the one above them towards the master server. So any children that they have, they know nothing about. And it's done this way just to make things simple. The master server keeps track of everything, and it's added under it. So you can see there, here we are, um, 110, 132, 140. So you can see 110 is my computer upstairs, 132 is the first one, and 140 is the second one on the tree. So you can see it's formed. So if you imagine the master server is about here-ish, then it's formed that sort of nice tree-like structure where it's sort of working its way down in terms of nodes. So that's looking pretty good, actually. I'm happy with that. Excellent, good, okay, so far so good. So now that we've done that, let's actually try connecting up another computer to the network. We'll use another client and then we'll actually try sending some emails back and forth. So I don't know the ID of that computer, so I'll send the, the email from here. So we'll just steal the disk here. Where are we? And then we'll just work our way back to the computer. A lengthy process, I understand, but we'll get there. Same thing we did beforehand. Uh, top this time. Okay, and this time it has found one. This time, however, this won't be connected to the master server. This will be connected to, I think it was 140, was the name of this computer. So we'll just go dot dot here, and now we should be able to connect to our a mail program. So, client, and this is mail client. This now uses the preference file that's on the base directory, and here we are. Beautiful um, <laughs> leaf computer. Yeah, we'll, we'll keep it in the leaf, you know, it should be fine. And this is 144, great. So let's compose a new email. Let's send this to 110. Nice. Ah, uh, yes. All right, that's looking quite good. So now we'll just... Still like this again, we'll maybe come back a little later. The thing I wanted to sort of elaborate just while I'm doing this walk here is um even though this has been used mostly for mail at the moment, there's so many other things that you can apply it to as well. Because the idea is that any server can harvest any sort of uh, request or any other sort of work that you want to do at all. So you could have it dealing with instant messages, you could have it dealing with file transfer. I'm thinking of writing an operating system that uses the network entirely just so it can use that sort of file transfer style system where computers will download files from the file server that will then in turn work as programs so that they can use on network enabled computers. So, yeah, this is sort of uh, something I might do if I get around to it and if I have time um, and if I you know, have, sort of have the patience for it. It'd be great things to sort of do collaboratively but yeah, you know, it's it's certainly available and it's possible and it'd be great fun. So, you know, there's, there's a lot you can do with these sort of systems. And so if you're interested in this sort of stuff, you should you should give it a try. Play around with it a little bit. It's, there's a lot that you can do. So just refresh our emails here. Lovely. Great. That's worked really nicely. <laughs> the enter there is a silly thing. But great. Um, so you can see there that's working, that's working really quite well. So... We've got there, so you can see now that that has first off that on its own has fixed the range problem right there. So now you can send emails as far as you want to. But it, again, the system's far more powerful than that. Really, it is. And um, I'm sort of hoping that we can sort of get that across. So I'm just um, one of the things I've been working on. I just might just steal a computer from in here to do this because we'll need another computer. And I might steal that as well. Sorry. 
bro. I got this later. Uh, do apologize, but it's just a moment. You can see I've got a few little sort of things working up here for an idea that I've been working on, and it's a bit primitive at the moment, but the core of it's there. So let me just reattach my computer to the network here, and I'll just show you the, the stuff that we're working on, which is to do with the, the magic server. I get the name from a, a project that we're working on at the university, um, or that was being worked on rather, um, last year, and a friend of mine was working with it, and it, it was it was really cool, and I, I liked it, so I, I thought I'd just yeah, name something so a bit similar to it. Um, I won't say much more than that, so let's just turn my computer on here. Let's just do the same thing we did beforehand, so we'll just go, um, disk, uh, network, register, and we'll just register here as well. So, you, um, that's the top thing. So it's it, not, not, not difficult at all to do this, you can, you can really cook up anyway. Now, I was working with the defense server here. And here we are, magic, great. So all these turtles you can sort of see lying around here, they each have functions working with the redstone. You can sort of see this going on here. And these are sort of some of my magic turtles. So I don't know if they're turned on or not. Okay, this one is not on because it's bomb. There we are. Oh, it's just a hundred. Yeah, there we go. Um, we'll turn that one on as well. Gunnery, that's right. And this one is 102. Great, these computers here, they're, they're based on a sort of very simple code to work with some defense applications that I sort of have, have my, my ideas on. Yeah, I, d I don't know how applicable they are at the moment, they're not, not the best sort of application, but yeah, you know, they're, they're something, and so... Gunnery. Great, so, um, sorry, just 100. So the thing is that these, each of these computers here are hooked up to the magic server, and they're designed to do um, actions that are determined by the computer. So you can see these dispensers, obviously they shoot arrows. And this computer up here, this is quite cool. This is a little gate system where sort of having it, it's going to go down into a underground room down there somewhere. And the idea is that it can do two things. It can either open doors or it can drop a bomb. And so when it opens a door, um, I'll have to turn it on to make it do that in just a second. Again, we haven't really thought this through very carefully. It's, it's been pretty roughly prototyped at the moment, but certainly it has some applications. And once we figure them out, they'll be a bit nicer. Back here. So the idea is that, yeah, these pistons here will be opened if it's asked to open. And if it doesn't, then what will happen is it will then open up the pistons that are down here will lead into a nice obsidian hole where um, there's a dynamite will be dropped down, the, the hole will then be closed and then God willing you will be sort of set alight. Sort of cool. Um, I'll just steal some stone to fill a hole if I should carry some extra of it doesn't really matter. Alright, that. Okay, so let's see if I can get this thing working. At the moment, they're just test applications. I need to make a, a, a nice GUI that works with it nicely. But if we just go into client here, it's DF console, is it? No, no, I don't want the client. No, that's not there yet. It's going to be test. That's right. Great. Okay, let's just try the open test. Ah, oh, beautiful, that's working really nicely. There you go, cool, I've forgotten that's going on. So there we go, um, the open test here, what that's just done is it's just sent a, a, an article to 137 there, because that's the computer connection to, and it's sent this request to Magic saying, can you please open that door that I've, that I've sort of asked you to open there, in which case that the doors will then sort of fling themselves open. Um, they'll stay open for five seconds, then they'll close back in. However, if you rather, and let's actually just, let's have the door open for this, because it's, it's amusing to watch, if anything else. I'll have to get a friend to help me do this next time, but let's just see if I can get this... Nice. Bomb test. Down it goes. Fantastic. There we go. Great. Um, so there you go. <laughs> the, um, the turtle destroys this piece of ground, drops a TNT bit of down there, and then doors then close up, and, and anything that's left inside there is, well, yes, it doesn't, doesn't go so well. So uh, that would be a really fun thing to do. I, I, actually, this is an island, so it's sort of pointless, but if you had an area in the middle of nowhere, you know, in a, a nice a bit around area in like a desert or a, or a forest or something, um, it's actually not a bad idea for like a regular door, because if you want to try and get outside and there's a whole bunch of creepers in the way, you just press the bomb button on the side of the wall, that would then go to a turtle, it would then say to the defense turtle, hey, can you please bomb this door? It would then just open up, throw the, all these creepers down to a hole, blast them with TNT, and, you know, you can even have like a little access tunnel land there to, to collect the dynamite if you really want to do as well, so... It's a, it's, it's, a, it's a cool little system, actually. It works really nicely. So, yeah. Um, that's defense. Again, there's so much more you can do with this sort of thing, and I really want to stress this stress this to you guys as well, is that you know you can, you can go so much farther with these sorts of ideas. So if, you, if, if you're at all interested in it, um, 
I'll, I'll post the code when I've got it a bit cleaned up. I might even do some APIs so it's easier to write servers and things for it because sometimes it's a bit boring. But, um, you know, if you have any ideas and stuff that you can do with this, you know, let me know. I, I was really happy to see that people were interested in the email system for my last one. So hopefully this is this gets a nice reception too. So, yeah, thanks really much for watching. Um, thanks for taking interest. If I, I suppose it's been great to great to see that some people are really excited about some stuff and, and and really getting into what Minecraft, what um, computer craft is all about. Uh, you know, making some really cool stuff that changes the way Minecraft plays. If you have any ideas, I'd, I'd love to hear them. So, yeah, cool. Best of luck.